Hello, uh, this is Bob McCaffrey Lent, pastoral assistant for music and liturgy at St. Joseph. And uh, this is the next in our series of music ministry profiles. And uh, today I have with me Thomas Bowling, and Thomas is uh, otherwise known as Thomas the Tenor. He sings tenor in the choir at St. Joseph. Um, thanks so much for being with us today, Thomas. No, oh, absolutely. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Great. And um, again, uh, as in the, all the other cases, this is just a chance for some of the members of the music ministry uh, who are fairly public sometimes. And Thomas is one of our cantors, so you do see him up there uh, sometimes leading us in music. Uh, just a chance for them to uh, let, let you know a little bit about them and how they came to, uh, to love music and uh, doing music in church and what that means to them. So. Uh, so, Thomas, um, how about you? And when, when did this all begin for you? How did you fall in love with music? And... Well, music, uh, um, I, I, I don't remember when I started um, singing or playing instruments or whatever, uh, but it, it was pretty young. Uh, we had this little, I can't remember if it was Fisher Price or whatever, xylophone, and and I would always be pinging on it or banging on something or tapping or uh, or something. So I, I I think for some reason I always had this this rhythm or this this flow of things. I love the flow of things, the me melodic flow of life. And uh, and I, I do remember when I started actually getting into music a little more. It was my dad uh, was a was a hardware software engineer and he worked for Schober or organ company in New York City and he designed one of the um, one of the prototypes of a, a it was a the first electronic uh, church organ it was totally electric uh, and uh, it had all the dips and switches but he had the prototype at the house and so I'd listen to Barry Manilow records and then go on the, the organ and you know, uh, Mandy, uh, you know, whatever I could. I mean, I didn't have any training or anything like that. Um, the second of, of five kids, so you can imagine it. Uh, growing up in in the in the seventies um, and uh, in the early eighties, we were just getting out of the disco age, and I, I didn't have any any exposure to that at all. Um, I was I was born in uh, in uh, in the Bronx, uh, Strong Street in the Bronx, and. We moved when I was about three to Baldwin, Long Island, which is Nassau County, uh, New York. And then um, when I was about six or seven, we moved to Washingtonville, New York, which is outside of the city in the southeastern part of, uh, of New York. Um, so constantly moving, and it had to do with, with my dad's job and uh, our, our ever-expanding family. Um, and then at 11, we moved to, um, to Massachusetts. But... <clears throat> In between that period of time, when I got to, um, when we moved to Washingtonville, I mean, AM radio was it. That's all. That's all I could listen to. And I would, very late at night, I had this tiny little, this tiny little radio, and I would try to tune in things if I could. And I was getting New York stations. It was really, um, it was, it was great. And then in Massachusetts, it did the same thing. But I, I remember, I remember Ambrosia. And hearing, uh, you're the biggest part of me, and um, or you're the only woman, and the biggest part of me. Just two songs. I just remember them, and uh, and I just thought, wow. And, and listening to the songs, and then going to school in upstate New York, it was pretty rural. Um, so I had to take a high school bus because that was the only bus that ran on our street. It was about 13 miles or three miles uh, of road with about 13 houses on it. It wasn't that much, much at all. Mm. And I had to take a 20 minute ride to the high school or 15, 20 minute ride to the high school and then cross the high school parking lot and take another bus to get to the Catholic school that I went to St. Uh, Columbus. Um, and the reason that's significant is because here I am, little kid, uh, first, second grade, second grade, third grade maybe, and I'm on a bus with all these high schoolers, which is awkward. Um, but they have eight track tapes and they have uh, cassette tapes. And <clears throat> I was exposed to Fleetwood Mac and uh, Fleetwood Mac, Steely Dan, Super Tramp, um, just all these mm -hmm. different types of music that someone my age would 
would, would never would never get exposed to. Right, um, yeah. But that was it. I mean, when I started hearing, uh, I, I didn't understand what the words meant or anything like that. So it was always it was always about the the, the song and the melodies, and um, that really started me in in music. And then when I got to Massachusetts, um, and I went to Catholic school there. Uh, could sing a little bit here and there, but it wasn't until high school, I went to public school, that I got into theater. And uh, and I very quickly just fell in love with theater. Uh, and that was that was me. I When I graduated high school, I got two superlatives, uh, class clown, uh, surprise. Uh, and, uh, no and surprise there. Exactly. And, uh, <laughs> well, you know, and most talented, um, which, which I, uh, I, I really, I really appreciated that that kind of um, that vote from from my from my class. It was uh, it meant a lot. Um, I I really wanted to pursue acting as a career, but uh, I couldn't afford to go to college. Um, I didn't have the money because I was I, I I was in rock and roll bands after after school, and you know I'd, I'd I'd have rehearsals for theater and rock and roll bands and whatever, and I I just was silly spent my money but the second of five kids too my parents didn't have the money to send me to college right. um, so much to the heartbreak of my uh my theater teacher i uh, joined the navy um just out of and some people well, how'd you make that decision it was, it was out of left field but uh i just decided i i really wanted to broaden my horizons and stimulate things and uh and and so i, I joined the service and um in the navy uh, I was stationed on an aircraft carrier for four years, seven months, 10 days, and three hours. And yes, we did count. <laughs> um, and it was the Navy where I really started to hone my musical craft. Um, mm. So uh, still not singing anything but rock and roll and pop and, and things like that. But uh, I was exposed to Steely Dan uh, in particular, so I not on not in and in, when I think about it, just to correct, I, I, I didn't learn about Steely Dan in, when I was on the bus in New York. I learned about Steely Dan while I was in the Navy, mm -hmm. and um, and it, it was I, Jim Williamson, I think the guy's name was. And this is how significant it is. I, I'm not friends with this person. I knew this person for a, a couple months, maybe, but I I just remember Jim Williamson said to me, he said, "You've never heard of Steely Dan," and he brought Steely Dan up, and then. The complex melodies and the the rhythms and and everything and I was just wow music is music can be something really great and I started to get into jazz because of it and um, and so here I am in the Navy and doing that uh, and you have nothing to do now I was in two six month deployments on an aircraft carrier and the reason on an, on an aircraft carrier, you have a little bit more space, obviously, than a submarine. So <laughs> on the first one, I bought um, my first deployment, I, I bought a bass guitar and brought that on. Mm -hmm. And so during the uh, Persian Gulf War, I, uh, I, I practiced my skills at bass guitar and met up with a, a guitarist who worked in the shop across. And uh, we played uh, midway through the Gulf War, we had a break and what they call a steel beach picnic and they had a talent show and I played that with uh, with uh, with Tony, uh, a guy that I that I met on the boat and uh, we won. Uh, we did more than words by extreme uh, <clears throat> and back then because uh, it was a relatively new song. Um, and on the second deployment, uh, I actually bought uh, a keyboard and then I really started to to learn how to play piano again, all self self taught. Still not doing anything but kind of writing my own stuff and learning little right. licks here and there. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so now you fast forward. I get out of the service. I I get back to um, I live in Chicago for a little while after that. Then um, moved back to Massachusetts. And when I got back to Massachusetts, I met back up with some of the guys that. Uh, that I was in my rock and roll bands with because I was still good friends with them and wound up singing back up on a couple of albums for some um, some bands that that they were actively involved with and uh, then started writing uh, writing my own so I mm -hmm. wrote a whole album <laughs> did uh, all the piano all the vocals all the organ uh, all the arrangement um, all the direction on it uh, never went to mastering or anything it's one of those where 
it was really a freshman experience uh, in the studio, um, but it was it was really invaluable. Um, played in a couple of cover bands as well. Uh, and it was just by chance that someone heard me one time and said, hey, um, would you ever consider singing, you know, in a church choir? And I thought, mm -hmm. well, you know, to be honest, I, I, I've had friends um, in the Navy. I was friends with the chaplain on the boat. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I've had my, my to be honest, I, I've had my ins and outs with the Catholic Church and, and how uh, I've connected with um, with uh, with Catholicism, living in in New York and in Massachusetts, and uh, I, I just had not really connected that much with it. Um, mm -hmm. But when I started singing and I started getting into 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 the the music and how we take that melody of life, we combine it with prayer, and then we 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 give that as a gift. Um, I I was hooked and and I thought wow this is this is great and I really started to get into it and then I started to get into classical music and then someone said you know you, maybe you should take some lessons uh, so mm -hmm. I took a couple of spot lessons here and there and but classical music so different the techniques so different than this kind of scrappy rock and roll garage band and even doing pop and some of those other things it's very different um, just like jazz is very different uh, but uh, I liked the challenge of it, and then I sang with uh, so I sang with a with a small church, and then someone there said, you know, have you ever heard of Quincy Choral Society? Uh, so it's about a eighty to hundred person choir in uh, uh, south of Boston. So I I got involved with them. I was one of their uh, one of their tenors, and then became one of their tenor soloists. So I did some solo work for them, and that's where I really really started getting to dig into the technique. Uh, I learned a tremendous amount. Um, and then life happens, it gets crazy. And um, I had multiple ups and downs and went away from music for a while and then back and then away. And um, and then we fast forward, I met my lovely wife uh, and um, we moved to Seattle in 2012. Um, and and we're trying to figure out, uh, so what do we do? You know, would, where where might we go with church? We were living in the Magnolia at the time. And we pick up a, a stranger, uh, a, a stranger magazine, you know, that, that right. and, uh, and I was actually looking in the magazine for music opportunities. Mm -hmm. And uh, so third, fourth, uh, halfway through, maybe uh, there was a, an article on, um, on Father John in St. Joseph's. Mm -hmm. And I went, oh, no, because uh, what I really didn't want is I didn't want what I've experienced before, where it's a magazine and they bash the Catholic Church and whatever, mm. and, and it and it wasn't that at all. And Karen and I both looked at this and said, "Wow, this this is this is something else. This this might be something we could really get involved in." So uh, we went to mass. It was in September, I think, of um, I don't know how many years ago, Bob. Um, probably twenty twenty twelve, maybe. Maybe 2012. Maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I'm in the church, in the back of the church, and music starts, and um, listening to everything, I thought, "Wow, this this music is great. This is better than any of the music that I've I've sung in in other churches because I I don't feel like I'm in a funeral all the time. Uh, it's it's actually it, it's actually upbeat. Or, okay? and I thought, "Wow, this is uh, this is something else." So I'm singing along and whatever. And uh, at the end of the at the mass. Um, the announcements were made, and and I, I can't remember who it was. It might have been uh, Deacon Steve. He said, "Yeah, you know, Bob McCaffrey Lent is looking for for uh, new choir members. We really need men and whatnot." And with that, the woman who's sitting in front of me turns around and says, "Well, if you don't volunteer for the choir, I'm going to volunteer you because I've heard you all mad." <laughs> and who was it but Julie Olson? Um, so you can really thank Julie Olson for uh, thank you, Julie. For, for really giving me that that push and uh, and you know I've never been as invested in uh, in serving as I have since joining St. Joseph's. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, I, I do St. Vincent de Paul, uh, which I absolutely love, uh, 
and and cantering is is just wonderful and it's shifted it's really shifted me from uh the mindset of when you're doing rock and roll and and pop and and you're performing in different clubs and venues and stuff it's performing when when you're giving music as a gift in church you're becoming part of of that prayer and, and you're spreading that out and trying to make that connection with other people and connection is so important for me it's the same with theater when you're when you're there you want to connect with the audience you want them to feel what you're feeling you want to to help them uh get into it and um and i've learned so much and with all of the challenges that i've had in my life i found so much peace in uh in sharing the gift of music however i can um and and so uh so it's been wonderful it's it's been a super gift for me um so I, I feel like I gain from it all the time. And when you look at challenges and, and pluses and minuses singing in a choir, I mean, again, it's another technique. When you're a soloist, you're singing a very particular way. When you're in a choir, it's about the blend. It's about, um, about matching, stylistically matching and getting into that melody and that groove. Um, and so, uh, so I, I don't know. It, it kind of answers a few of your questions that you had. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm sorry I had to work so hard to drag it out of you, Thomas. Ah, uh, yeah, you just pull it, pull it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm bashful. I don't talk a lot. Indeed, indeed. Well, from one Bronx boy to another, one Steely Dan lover to another. Right on. Thank you for uh, for taking the time to be with us today, Thomas. Yeah, coffee. And, um, not sure when it will be, but look forward to being back together and doing music at St. Joe's and wherever else it takes us. Thank you, Bob. Uh, and well, thank you, everyone. St. Joseph's, uh, I absolutely enjoy every single Sunday that I get to sing for you and sing with you and uh, wonderful thing. So thank you. Thank you for sharing your gift with us. Take care. You too.